if I do a healthcare class or when I do classes, mm. I talk about general health in a context where chiropractic fits in and makes sense, you know, mm. right? So I use uh, the, the linear diagram with the time thing. And then once it falls below a certain point, you get a symptom, right? Right. So if it's diet, you're not going to get fat and have heart disease if you go to McDonald's today. Right. But if you continuously do it over time, it falls below a certain line, you know. I, I talk about those things mm -hmm. and then I, I put chiropractic into the formula mm -hmm. and then I say, okay, today's class is about this because I'm a chiropractor, right? So we're going to talk about the spine and the nervous system and the impact that has on health. And guess what? It works the same way. Mm -hmm. You don't take care of your spine over time. It's going to, you know, right? So... I don't know if you call that mixing. What, what, what would the format of your, like, obviously, don't give us the full charla, but, like, right. what, what's the format? What's the basis of your charla? Because if I ask um, three different car partners, I'm going to get three different charlas. I stole most of it. Yeah, everyone steals. I stole most Mine's of it. stolen. And I stole, I stole it from probably one of the most success, successful practices ever. <laughs> what? Huh? Who's? I'm not going to say that. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, it's a, it's a good talk. So it, I, I open with a question and I try to engage the, the audience with that question and, you know, try to get them to think differently. Mm -hmm. And then I go to that thing. So the general health thing, mm -hmm. I call that the rainbow rule. So the what? The rainbow rule. The rainbow rule. What's yeah. That? So you have rain, the word rainbow, mm -hmm. right? You have rest, mm -hmm. attitude, uh, I is for intake of nutrients, B is for brain, spine, nervous system, O, oxygen, and W for water, right? Okay. Rainbow, right? Yeah. So then I talk, okay, rest, you know, you need a certain amount of rest to be healthy. If you don't rest enough, like you can go maybe three, four days without sleeping, but after that, your pulse is going to go up, your cardiovascular system is going to work harder. You know, everything in, in your, in your body is going to be overdrive pretty much. Sure. And if you do that for a long time, you're going to get symptoms, right? And then I, I talk about those things, you know, uh, attitude, same with attitude. You know, you can have a shitty attitude. Okay, it's going to, you can have that for a short period of time. But if you go through your life with a shitty attitude, your life is going to be shit. Mm -hmm. Right? It's so the same thing. It's that line, right? right. Uh, oxygen, same thing. Most people, majority of people spend their whole days indoors. In the and now more than ever, man, with the lockdown yeah. and the corona and all that shit. Yeah. And then you have that combined with the fact that most radiation you get comes from buildings, right? You, you, you got that from David Lopez? I got that from school. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Yeah, yeah, I learned that in school, yeah, yeah. actually. One of the few things I learned, which yeah. was interesting. I was like, <laughs> wow, great. That's pretty cool. Because I thought, oh, majority of radiation you get comes from space, right? Right. Or Wi-Fi or whatever. Yeah. But I don't know if the Wi-Fi is See, included in the I, building. I would but it comes from the material that right. they use to build, right? Yeah. Somehow, when they process it. So I don't know the ex exact, but... That's why I'm asking According you, to some study by, published by somebody, you that, know. That's, that's interesting the, to me because I would never talk about radiation from the buildings or like EMFs mm. in my talk. Like it just doesn't enter the conversation. Okay, well, so the building. I don't go deeper into that. I just talk about oxygen, sure. right? So that's the. I say, look, there's bad air. Air needs to move, right? Right. Same as water, it needs to move. To flow. Same as your spine, it needs to move. Oh, you see where I'm going okay. with this right, stuff? Right, right, Everything right. needs to breathe and move. Right. Right. So if you're sitting all day indoor, you need to compensate. The cerebral spinal fluid. Yeah, is, you yeah. need to compensate. You need to do breathing exercises. You need to spend time in nature. All of these things, right? Yeah. It's not chiropractic. But it puts it into a perspective where, okay, hey, there, is, there are things that I can do as well for my health. Yeah. You know? So I, I try to, take, to get people to take charge of their own health as well. You know? I want them to hold their adjustment as long as possible. And I want to see them the least amount possible. Right. That's so cool. that's what the talk is about, right? Nice. Also, I think. Then I talk about the brain, spine, and nervous system. Works the same way as diet. Right. You know? Or exercise or whatever if you don't take care of it by time it's going to go down so and i then i go into the so i say okay we start with this then i go into the formation of the nervous system the two cells and the the yeah, rich gold I, I the rich yeah. gold bit you yeah. know 
The, the, then you have the formation of systems. Okay. I include I, that. Yes. Me you too. know, immune system, yeah. respiratory system, which includes you know these parts, yeah. muscular system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then three T's. You know, the concept of this is, and also I love to talk about the concept of diagnosis. You know. Okay. And I say I don't diagnose, right? Because it will. It's also part of. Like, first of all, I don't know if this is true, but diagnosis in in Greece, like mm. the people who wrote the Hippocrates, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the Greek medi medicinal guys, the guy who wrote the the vocabulary for medicine, they had huge sense of humor because diagnosis, D, two? No, not two. Yeah, me. agnosis, right? So two people who don't know. Diagnosis, right? The doctor and the patient. <laughs> So what's happening in your body? Diagnosis, right? It was like they planted the but, seed for yeah. thousands of. They they knew Hilarious. what would happen Hilarious. with the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, funny, funny. I find that funny. Yeah, I didn't find out that that's also. But here's the thing with knowledge. Do you explain right? that in your talk? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you can also split it up to dia, and then gnosis. So the the way of knowing. Right. right? So it depends how you split the word. Yeah. But anyway. It's funny. I find it funny. I talk about that and I say, uh, like, I, I talk about tendinitis or neuritis uh -huh. and break down the, the, the medical jargon a little bit. Right. Because it sounds like something that's huge and really bad and dangerous for you, where neuritis means inflammation of the nerve. Right. That's all it means. See, I would never. Tendinitis, you know, I, that's just shit I find interesting. Yeah. Right? Exactly, shit the, you find interesting. Yeah, shit so I find interesting. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, if, you, if yeah. you find it interesting, they... Probably, yeah. yeah. I don't know what it... What it but yeah, then uh, spine, three T's... Don't, don't oh, sorry. Spine, three T's... Uh, what else? Then I show them some science. Uh -huh. Why? Uh, because most people have this idea that chiropractic is alternative. Uh -huh. It's not. So you want to show them something? Yeah. And I tell them that most people think chiropractic is alternative. It's not. It shouldn't be. It's the same as dentistry. It should be. Uh, yeah, it should be for everybody. Assessor, yeah. yeah, it's uh, just as normal as dentistry. Checking your spine, making sure it works well. Yeah. Your nervous system works well. Show, so I show them some science and stuff. And then uh, uh, some stories I throw in there. I do that too. Yeah. As well. Yeah. yeah, that's good. It it's, keeps uh, them engaged. Like it's a very down to earth thing. Social, social proof. Mm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's not a very. How long? Know, how long? An hour? I can go for 30 minutes, maybe max. Right. Yeah. Okay. Longer than that, I don't go. That, that's everything? Or is yeah. It, okay. But I find that's more than enough. I also read articles that says around 40 minutes, people's brain switch off. Mm. And, so that's and the maximum. What, what, uh, espe especially in this generation. Mm. 40, yeah. 40 minutes, you're probably oh being man, very you're pushing it. Yeah. But 40 minutes is where on a new topic where you don't find it particularly interesting. Right. That's where you start losing. Uh, mm -hmm. So I try to keep it 30, 40 minutes. With the science component, you're like, I want to show them some science. What, mm. what does that entail? That entails a lot of posture. Research. Research, yeah. Are you, are you studies. giving them articles or showing them? I'm showing them. I have some material that I, I bought. Do, do Keith Watson. Do you think that's they, a good one. Do you think they give a fuck? Um, no. So why is it there? I don't think they give a fuck, but it's to prove a point. That it's not alternative. Okay. Because uh, people think that they're going to the voodoo doctor when they go to see you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's not like that. Yeah. I, I'll show them... Uh, Unfortunately, it's a bit... I mean... But I embrace that part as well. Yeah. I well, said, because this is... Yeah. You're here. Mm, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. At, in some capacity, you think that I can help you. Definitely. So... I, Definitely. But I, there is... I mean, why not show the reason? I mean, here's the thing with chiropractic. It's science, art, and philosophy. Mm. Science, art, and philosophy, sure. right? Science, Makes, yeah. that's one third mm -hmm. of chiropractic. If right. you leave that out, 
it's like a the chair but with two I, legs. I, I think that's important if you're with someone that's like a doctor or a mm. neurosurgeon or that, that's like a different audience. But if you're just sitting with average Joe mm. that uh, left school at 16, he doesn't have mm. a degree, he's never sat an exam in his life, and he's been a bricklayer for the last 20 years. Yeah, I don't think he gives a fuck about your research. But he might it. find it interesting to know that up to 10 years of your lifespan is related to your posture. Okay, sure. Yeah, well, that's so, significant, right? Yeah, something like that you can tell them. But like, I don't want to sit sure, man. and go into research articles and stuff and like. No, I'm not talking about like critically appraising. You just say, okay, the wh- the I, research shows. I combine bah, bah, bah. it. I combine it with when I do the the. Oh, wow, we're going into my charla here a lot, yeah. but that's it's, good. Yeah. Do yeah. you know with the do you have the time, the time and the the symptom axle sure. or not the symptom axle, but the, yeah, the percentage yeah. of yeah. nervous system functioning. Yeah. So always put, okay, in this corner we have percentage that your nervous system is functioning on. Yeah. So 100%, right? This axle here, do you say axle? Axis. Axis, yeah. yeah. Did you say axel in Finnish? So that's yeah. why. The axis here is time. Sure. Right? So as this one goes down, I mark some things on it, right? I'll write posture, right? Yeah. I'll put pain in there as well. Nice, nice. I'll put muscle tension. I'll, I put short leg. I put imbalance. I put different things, you know. So as the des- descent goes down, certain things start to happen, you know, right. as you subluxate more and more. One is definitely that, that your posture gets worse. So then I go into the research that says, okay, how much, how big of an impact does posture have on your quality of life and the way you function? So what the research tells us is up to 10 years of your life expectancy is related with your posture, mm-hmm. your grip strength, your muscle strength, your lung function, 30% of your lung function. Was your research project on grip strength? No, I did uh, toggle and uh, uh, oxygen saturation okay. in blood and beats per grip. minute. No. Oh. So up to 10 years of that is related with your, uh, your posture. 10 years is related with your life expectancy, right? 30% of your lung function might be decreased. So I say, okay, let's think about this. If your posture gets worse, 30% of your lung function decreases, what's gonna happen? Well, less oxygen in your blood, right? What happens as a consequence? Less oxygen to your brain. Right. When your brain gets less oxygen, guess what happens? You function less. Mm. Everything is affected, your speech, your movement, uh, the way your brain cleans toxins, everything, the way you interact with the world, right? right. So by making the posture better, right, we increase oxygen levels in the blood, mm-hmm. which means you can start healing. Da, 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 da. Right. And then I, I, I switch the curve at the bottom yeah. and I put, boop, 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 right, so uh, that's the purpose. You see what I mean? Okay. Right. And then you put, I put short leg, same things. Short leg starts decreasing, muscle tension goes down, the balance gets better, yeah. posture starts improving. Right, all of these things. Okay. And then when you get to 100%, I ask, okay, so now if we're here, does it make sense now that we quit? Right? Is this time, is that going to disappear? No. Yeah. Right? So that's why it makes sense to check your to spine. Maintain it. Right. So the, the talk is centered around two things for me. Uh, one, giving them tools that they can do to improve themselves, right? Or their own health. Okay. Take charge of their own health. Right. And then the second one, why maintenance care is important. Okay. Right? Cool. That, and that's, that's um, the well, way I view the talk. Do you... And to get them to think differently. Do you talk about... And sub- to question their doctors. Do you talk about subluxation with them? Yeah, I'll say subluxation. Okay. Yeah, misalignment of the bone. Right. But not on the first visit or on the report of findings. So I, I, with, with that, I disagree. Because... Mm. Um, my my talk I'll, I'll tend to go in and what one thing that i'm always curious about at the start like some people say don't um the worst thing you can do is ask questions yeah like, like, like Bra- brad glowack he's like i don't want to take uh, any questions and i see the logic at the because, talk yeah no yeah. no 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 i mean like he, he he doesn't he doesn't want you to ask like does anyone have any questions like that's the worst thing that you could say all right mm, because you're opening up to a whole host of things but you have to control the conversation but at the start of the charla, I like to talk to them a little bit about what they expect chiropractic or what they think chiropractic is. So I just say to them, I'm like, whenever you hear the word chiropractic, like mm. what is it that 
comes into your head what are you thinking about and the obvious things is like crack my neck crack my back it's like a physio it's mm. like the things i see on youtube and then I, and then i say like i'm in agreement with them i'm like okay look many people think these things people come in here all the time it's a normal thing that people would think that but really what i'm here to tell you is that chiropractic's none of those things at all the main focus of chiropractic is the nervous system and then i talk a little bit about how the nervous system's formed in the womb mm. and how it gives rise to all the other systems and then i'll give a little talk about like how um right now you're sitting listening to me you're not consciously having to think okay my heart needs to go at this many beats per minute i need to breathe this much uh, what was it that i had for breakfast it's at this stage of the digestion process i'm like all these things happen automatically and that's what lets you listen to me because yeah if you had to focus on that mm. nothing would ever get done right and i just say okay so we can agree that the nervous system is really important and they mm. say yes and i say because it's so important nature protected it you need right, to be able right. to move and it needs to be protected and that's the only moment that I will lift up the spine. I don't lift up the spine before because I'll see people, you see it in their eyes. They. I mean, they I talk about subluxation in the talk, obviously. Obviously. But not in the first visit. I talk about it constantly until they get it. Ah. Oh. Charla, first, first visit? visit? Charla, first visit, report of findings, no, everything. I don't do this is This is where you're subluxated. Oh, right. that you know, so that's what, that's why I ask because it's two different uh, approaches. I do. I mean, my first visit, I don't say anything i just listen i listen i write whatever they say down i do my examination mm -hmm. uh okay i do fuck i do give them a short explanation of what i'm about to do to them right right because yeah. i adjust on the first visit yeah you know so i do give them a short explanation yeah right i do yeah, yeah. okay uh, i do talk but i don't say subluxation I do. I, I, yeah. I want you to know, like I'll do... Um, but do you go, you have subluxation? Yeah. yeah. yeah? I, I, I do. The importance of the nervous system. Mm. Then I go into the stress. I explain physical stress, micro and macro, big trauma and little trauma. I go chemical stress. I go emotional stress. First visit? Charla. Uh, Charla. And then I say, why am I telling you all this? I was like, when you have this stress, it mm. causes what we call subluxation. And I say, if you only remember one part of the whole charla, that's the Here's word. Here's an interesting thing, though. Does stress? Do you believe that stress is the cause of subluxation? I believe so. Yeah. We can talk about that in a minute. That but then, like a... but then you wait, should wait, tell wait, them wait, how to me... reduce stress, right? I'll tell them they need to be aware of what causes their stress and they need mm. to get adjusted. But I'm not going to sit. Because you can, we can go down a whole rabbit hole there, and I'm going to be writing nutrition plans and doing uh, tests for what supplements you need to be taking and uh, giving you advice but on your see, sleep. Here's, like here's I don't want to do all that. I, yeah. I I adjust, but I'll go over the importance of the nervous system, the free stresses, the free stresses causes the subluxation, and I'll say my job is to find as best I can where you're subluxated, and then take the pressure off that nerve so that your brain can talk to that part of the body uh, much better. And then I'll use different examples such as like you have the arm filled with blood here. If there's an interference, so this is a subluxation mm. and I hold your arm like this, what happens to your hand? Right, right. And they, they get it. And then I'm like, okay, now it's not your arm filled with blood. This is a nerve transporting signals from your brain mm. to your heart. And you have a subluxation here. And then I explain it like that and they get it. But and then you... I'm like, now I'm going to check you, see where you're subluxated. And then we can talk about it. And then I'll say, you have, and I'll get the spine out. I'll say, you have. I'm going to play here, devil's here, advocate here. now because this is hilarious, mm. right? Pass me the vermouth. Here's the, this is the funny part. Uh, if that's true, that pressure on the nerve causes interference in it. Mm. Then how come people with severely degenerated low backs don't have sciatica? Are they functioning at 100? What if they don't have sciatica? Well, considering the circumstances, you might say that, right? What if they don't have sciatica, but they have period problems or digestion problems or they can't get it up? What if they have none of that? Mm. That's a possibility, right? I guess so. Yeah. yeah, it is, right? So that's a bit weird. Is though. your body able to adapt to stresses as well? So if you get To it, a certain limit, right? The, remember uh, <laughs> the neurology, the, the, the central integrative state? We have to cut this bit out because this is confusing. We're just confused. Yeah, but let's keep talking. Yeah. S central, inter <laughs> central integrative state of a yeah, neuron. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. how quick it can recover. So you might not have symptoms, 
and uh, my grandfather might not have symptoms. I mean, when it, but yeah. you get into a car accident, and let's say, let's say both of you, God forbid, touch wood, you both end up in a coma. Uh -huh. Your central integrative state is in a better position to adapt to that stress. This is why Adrian Wemban's always going on about so ad adaptive this is capacity. The, thing. the cause, We're increasing the cause, adaptive capacity. There is one cause that. of subluxation: the body's inability to adapt. Mm -hmm. Right. I backs up what I'm saying. Yeah, mm. we agree, right? So it's not the three T's. The the three T's are the stress. Your body's inability to adapt to that stress is what. Co and then you have. But that's, new, the, wait, that's wait, the interesting then, thing. Then you have another way we could go down because if yeah. you if you talk to Amy Burke, she'd yeah. say the inability to adapt to stress. You're saying that that's a negative thing causing the subluxation. The subluxation is a beautiful thing because without the subluxation, those stresses might have killed you. But your body adapted somehow to be like, I'm going to deal with this later. Why would you take that away then? Because the See, that's the, what doesn't make sense. Because the threat, the stress is now, right, let's say... No, 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 no. That, that's something you should ask Amy Burke. Because I will how, ask Amy Burke. How, why would you go then if, the, if there is an intelligence in the body, right? If you let me explain, and, I'll, I'll, right. try, I'll try it. Right, let's say that uh you are this uh, went deep oh you put more to me as well i'm, I'm just uh, paraphrasing here but I, i'm making this up as i go along but mm. let's say that you are a single mother with two kids mm -hmm. and uh your husband dies of a of a, a terrible car accident from one day to the next you yeah. don't you have a husband you have two small kids I have he, a husband. you have to organize a Think funeral about the children. you you have to organize the finances of the family yeah. you have to go to the funeral yet you're not really able to grieve yet you have this huge emotional stress on your shoulders you have to deal with it and you've got two small kids but you, maybe you, 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 you go to, you go to the wedding yeah uh, sorry the, not the wedding the, you go the to funeral. the you go to the, the funeral way. you deal with it you kind of um, learn to live with it for a little while maybe your kids grow up right. and then one day you stumble into the chiropractor's office and the chiropractor finds something in your neck he finds something at c2 you have an emotional subluxation because you at that time you weren't able to process that stress as well the chiropractor where, that's the car, where, wait the wait i want to say a nice joke that's where the network practitioner goes did your husband George die about uh, two years ago? Exactly. That's why, <laughs> even though we laugh at the network, like yeah, the network that's people, true, they're, they're onto something. Yeah, yeah, they're that's, onto something. If you come to someone like me, that's just a, a fucking bone puncher, <laughs> and I and then I I punch you in the the C two, and we move that thing, mm. and you go home, and your kids have grown up, right? Those two small six year olds, they've grown up. They're in college. You're your own woman now, and then that woman goes home, and she sits on the sofa, and she's like. That was a lot and then she starts crying and now she has an emotional reaction to the release of that subluxation so that subluxation was a beautiful thing at the time because it allowed her to adapt to the well it allowed her to be in that fret in that fight or flight state and say later on i'm going to adapt to this now that's not the definition of subluxation that uh, that bj would, and that stevenson would, wait, were wait, saying then. but i think she has a point when she's saying that but maybe i'm that butchering would, it i don't but know but wait that would be then that would imply that it's not always the best thing to adjust people. Because if you would adjust her during that two year period, whatever, where she has to hold her shit together and be in a state of fight or flight, mm. right? And you adjust her and it, she becomes really parasympathetic and chilled out and everything goes to shit, right? So that implies that there's a, it's not always good to adjust well, people. What if she got adjusted and it gives her a better way of adapting to that stress hmm. yeah if you're running a marathon many loopholes if you're holes, running man, a marathon <laughs> it might make more sense if you're really depleted that you would have a free course meal i can't give you a free course meal at the minute but i can give you like the sachets like to give you some glycogen at least mm. it will get you to the finish line and once you get to the finish line then we can get you a free course meal but this mm. will help you until you get there so I'll say to people, I'll be like, look, you're really stressed. I understand you've hard work at the job. It's Corona time. You might lose your job. You're going through a divorce. Like you're really fucking stressed out. I don't think this is just going to lift all your stresses and every stress that you have is going to no, go. Of course I not. think this is going to give you a better chance of adapting to the stresses that you have. Yeah. 
and don't make any promises to them. Just well, say like, point, okay, point say is that. to always be in the best state of health you can be. Sure. No matter what the fuck happens. Whether your husband That's died the point. Or, yes. Yeah. Or whether you're in a car crash or you're in a coma. That's the or point. Or you get COVID, you know. But that's... Uh, and, and then... That, there are so many... You know, that's the thing. If you... When you, when you know a lot mm. and you learn a lot, you also become more confused. The Dunning-Kruger effect. You know the Dunning-Kruger? No. So it's like... Um, oh, that's the guy who wants to fly the plane. No? I don't know. But it's uh, <laughs> the less you know about a subject, the more confident you'll be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and yeah, then yeah. the more you learn the less... Co- and the people that know the most down here, they're like the less sure of themselves because they're like, hmm, maybe I am an idiot. Let's see. Even though I know all this stuff, like maybe I don't know But you know what? I believe that's a problem in chiropractic. For you as a chiropractor. Tell me how. That's a problem. Why? Because you're having all these ideas. And then when you need to communicate clear with your patient, different things come out. Do you know what I mean? Like, like what? Like, say you want to explain subluxation, right? Sure. Then you need to have it very clear in your own head what it is you're doing and what the subluxation is. If you're doubting... Yeah, you can't have both, you know. You can't say, oh, it's the, 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 the hard bone of the soft nerve and then go, oh, no, 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 it's a good thing. You know, like you, you'll be completely schizophrenic, you know. Okay, okay. You can't have both the BGI and the hardcore Glumstead uh, definition of subluxation in your office. Well, we, we could ask Luke Corletto. That, that brings your numbers down. Though. That would be a good question for Luke Corletto because he was doing exactly what you just said. He was mixing BGI with Glumstead. Hmm. Could it be that the... High numbers? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Yeah. What if the BGI just opens you up a little bit more to be able to receive that adjustment so that you can get a deeper set? Sure. Probably. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Mysterious ways. But that's what I think. I think that's like you need to have clarity, you know? Mm. That's why now, like if, if you watch me, not, not so much on my podcast, but if you watch me when I was a guest on other podcasts, yeah. I'm very um, black and white. And it's a technique. Better. It's a technique pissing contest. My technique's better than yours. Now I'm not so much. I don't get into a technique pissing contest. Now I'm more like, okay, are you in some way being objective? So if you like leg length checks, I'm like, bless your heart, do your Thompson protocol and do your. Or if you like muscle testing, do I like muscle testing? Not really, but maybe you really like it and it helps you find where to go. Fuck I, no. I like <laughs> I like the X-ray and the scope. Do I like muscle testing? Fuck no, that's the only right answer. It's just an example, but if you like yeah. mm, whatever protocol it I is. I mean, I think the same way now, like, bless your heart, you help people, great. Yeah. But secretly in my mind, I think, what a fucking jerk off. He's <laughs> fucking doing muscle testing. What a little bitch. <laughs> you know? for, for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this yeah. and not a lot of this, yeah. you know. There's a, there's a limit. Paralysis by analysis, you know? I agree. Fuck, you gotta stop your shit at some point. Yeah. I can't do full Gonstead, SOT, AK, no. BGI, activator protocol, no. man. One. It's gonna fucking take 10 hours to adjust one person, man. It yeah. needs to be one, you know? Yeah. So that's the thing. Who can anchor to an unanchored mind, man? Mm. That's what it's about. I think that's the way it works. When you start doing one thing, you start attracting that into your office, then you can grow. Then the people who need your care will come in. And you'll be... If angry. you're fucking doing BGI, network, uh, activator protocol the other day, yeah. all this shit that it's like all over the place, it's not going to work. One day you're charging 150, the next day you're like, oh, I want to do box on the wall. Yeah. No, man, it's not going to work. Yeah. Not like, going to um, work. Make up your damn mind. Well, you, That's what it says. My favorite quote, who can anchor to your unanchored mind? What? It's, but it's all the other shit as well, like where you want to practice, you know, what you want to do, how many people you want to see, mm. what, is it you're, what is it that you're doing? You know, I, I had this realization like not too long ago, but... I, I agree with the... I mean, it's something I've been who, who a little can bit aware of. Yeah. Because, uh, for example, he'll not mind me saying on here, but uh, our, our mutual friend, Rafa. Yeah. I went on uh, Instagram the other day and there was a video from one of his patients and it was a patient uh, filming, you know, and Rafa's there and he had the, the charts, you know, that 3D model. Oh, where yeah. You can take the bones and you can put the muscles on the bones mm-hmm. and then you can get into the neuroanatomy. And he's showing them like 
this nerve connects to this muscle connects to here mm. this is where like maybe if you go somewhere else and you get some trigger point i'm releasing this so that this has more of a neurological supply and the patient's like really interested and i thought about it and i was like there's no perceivable uh, permutation of reality where i would be sitting with a neuroanatomy chart and a muscle and like showing them where but because why does that work because i'm not interested in it yeah he loves it and he that's why it. he's seeing a bunch of people he gets so, that love so, it they love it because they're like tell me which muscle it is that tight and where how is it this how does that work to and yeah. he'll attract. And then if you take someone like uh, Jordy that's doing all this functional neurology, yeah. he's busy as well. And he mm. has a bunch of people who are like, how does this stimulate this side of my brain to balance a hemisphericity? And the I get excited. <laughs> it's really fun. Like, I get excited with the scope. And they can't even see the scope. But I'll be like, when you came in here, you were 20 points and now you're five. Like, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Or do you see that on the, bi on, yeah, the, yeah. on the bilateral scales, you were six kilograms more? Like, can you imagine holding a six kilogram dumbbell in your arm all day like this? And yeah. now you're more balanced out and then they get it. Whatever it is that you're interested in, you will attract people that want to hear that message. If you really like leg length exactly. and you take a picture of them and you're like, look, your legs wow. are even now. I wouldn't say I'm like a leg length freak. I'm just using it <laughs> as an example, yeah. but you get it. You know? Yeah. Huh. as long as whatever finding it is that you're using you are interested in so i'm sure if we talk to deed harrison he loves seeing the curve improve do you see how much your curve improved like isn't that amazing now your brain can communicate better with your neurospinal man that's system. something i would love to see honestly like pre and post x-rays of that stuff it's there's plenty of them yeah there's hundreds Where? of them on the cbp uh, they're on youtube there's studies uh -huh. that you can get for free oh huh. I'm not sponsored by CBP, but... Uh, if they want to drop uh, some money in here, that would be uh, appreciated always. Yeah. 